for me, Rick. I don't know. I mean, you know, sometimes, sometimes things break. Wasn't that tremendous? When you think of last Sunday and this Sunday, uh, last week, witness His Majesty. This week, uh, wow, wonder His Majesty. And uh, we're going to look at that here in a little bit, His Majesty. Thank you, everyone, from upstairs to downstairs, the sound team and uh, all that you do. And, and thank you for putting up with the guy that doesn't know how to run, wear his microphone. But uh, thank you, beautiful voices from God that uh, just allowed us to just join in. And that's the way it should be. That'll be glory. Uh, as the song I only can imagine goes, uh, I can only imagine what it'll be like. And uh, to have that opportunity to, to have a little taste of that and, uh, on this earth is really, really powerful and wonderful. And I'm thankful. Thank you for the praise and worship team and the musicians and the song singers, the praise artists. Everything that they sung was truth and it was glory to God and the highest. That's really uh, what we desire to do. We want to give him glory in every song. Uh, sometimes around Christmas, uh, some of the songs are a little, you know, those were good songs with a great word and a great message. I'm going to uh, be in Luke's gospel if you want to turn there this morning. I'll get there in a little bit. Um, when I think of his majesty, as I spoke of last week, and this is part two, I'll speak of his majesty again next week. We said that we ought to witness his majesty. Well, it was really a, a nice layout. I was given, of course, a heads up on what our uh, production team was going to do uh, this past Sunday when they uh, had five skits up here put together like a, a little mini drama and, and brought a message of those that witnessed his majesty, those that were around. And uh, I don't know if any of you found anybody in the Bible and their accounting, like maybe the innkeeper's son. If you found that, then you have a different Bible than I do. But uh, finding things about Joseph was great, and, and all that uh, came across last week was, was wonderful and tremendous because it brought us to the place of His Majesty. And uh, today, again, when you and I say, okay, what just happened up there? Well, to me, there's a, there's a bit of wonder. We wonder his majesty. We, we wonder about God. At least I do. I spend time wondering about God, wondering about a lot of things. You, to me, can wonder of who he is. You can wonder of what he has done. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. There was an old song that was written years ago called Faith and Wonder. And it speaks of just Jesus, the name of Jesus. This name that shakes the mountaintops, the only word that breaks the curses off. Your name, the one that covers all, it's higher than others, higher than others. Faith and wonder. Again, I mentioned you can only imagine when you think of his majesty, you witness something up here and then you, well, that was nice. Well, that was, that was pretty good. Uh, uh, well, yeah, it was, and we, yeah, we clapped, and it was, well, the clapping is, yes, for those that have sung those songs because they have produced such a beautiful sound to the glory of God, but most of all, the applause should be for the one that we wonder about, His Majesty, worship His Majesty, and when you think, okay, wonder, we're going to move from witness to wonder. We're going to do that today and look at three different accounts in Luke's gospel that uh, it's just we're just going to use the Bible. And it's clear that the witness of his majesty moved to a place of wonder, his majesty. This morning, the music really captured our attention. You could say, wow, look at, wow, look, look at, look at the music. Hear the music, see the music, look at all the perform. look at all those people came up. And you're wondering why they didn't ask me to join in, aren't you? You say, oh, gosh. Yeah, they, they kept me out on purpose. And they keep a lot of us out, but they bring in 
those voices that have been gifted by God, that group and led by Pastor Dwayne in worship, they, they want to bring us to a place of worship so that we will join in. They're not necessarily leading us, so then you have to follow. They're being an example and a model, yes, that we would follow, but we want to join in with their worship. We want to sing a song, even when someone's doing a solo. You're singing those words, and those words are up on the screen, and that's intentional because you're saying, wow, this morning the music really captured my attention with a sense of wonder. The word wonder, a cause of astonishment or admiration, to marvel to see a miracle, something or someone that is very surprising, beautiful, or amazing. So you, wow, that was really good. A sense of wonder. Astonishment is good. Rapt attention where you just go, wow, that had my attention. I don't think there were many people that when the song was continuing, that last song and it was ramping up, the first Noel, that many people go, oh, I guess uh, I, to be distracted in that moment Maybe it points to how we are if we are distracted by those moments because those moments are moments where we should wonder about God. Do God's people, I mean, do people in general wonder about who God is to them? Do they? Do do you spend time wondering? I wonder if you wonder about God, the wonder of something, just to wonder about who he is. See, God is, in the scriptures, spoken of in so many ways, his attributes and all that he really is, the person he is. Do you wonder, God's people, do other people wonder, is God there? Is God really care? Does God really exist? The famous old three questions that were always around, where did I come from? Why am I here? What's going to happen when I die? They all point to God. They all have to point somewhere. Either you're your own God or you wonder about God. Psalm 48 says God is our God forever and ever. Psalm 50 says God is judge himself. Psalm 75 says the same. Psalm Psalm 54 says God is mine helper. Psalm 56 says God is for me. God is my defense, Psalm 59. Psalm 62, God is my salvation. God is a refuge, Psalm 73. God is the strength of my heart. God is holy. Do you wonder about God? God is merciful, Psalm 160. Psalm 118, God is the Lord also in Psalm 144. When you look these verses up and you read and you study the Bible, you get to a place where you're just going amazed. I mean, you're in a place of amazement and astonishment. Do you wonder? To stop and think on him. To have a thought about him right now. He has given us his wonder so that we can wonder and return about him. What do I wonder? What do I wonder about? Do you wonder in your thought life about the mighty works of his majesty? Do you wonder about what he's doing, how he's going to do things? See, you can wonder about who he is, but you, to me, could also wonder about what he's done. What do I wonder about? What do you wonder about? Uh, let me just tell one of the things I wonder about is what things are going to be like in the next five or ten years for our young people in our ministry. When I became the pastor a number of years ago, I had been a youth pastor for a lot of years, assistant pastor, been in a little bit of ministry here and there for a long time, and I thank the Lord. ADP Sports has shown me so many things about God and his divine work with children and and older children and families and moms and dads, and I wonder, what's our family going to be like? What's what's my grandchildren going to grow up in? I wonder about that a lot. I wonder so much that I went to the, the board a number of years ago. I said, boy, we need to just get a, we have, we've had some good men serving in, in youth ministry. The best, the best. But we need to somehow, God, have the funds. And, and board, could we have the funds to be able to have a youth pastor? We have a children's ministry director who's tremendous. And we want to have a youth pastor that would be full time. And then maybe, God, we could add some more pieces and parts. And, and we brought Josh Bennett on in, in the, the middle of 2020. And then this past year, we were able to bring Brian Calloway on, and God put that all together and orchestrate that. And I wonder, what are we going to do for our families? 
thought, okay, well, we've taught our kids and we've taught our young people. What about our young singles? What about our families? What about those that have children? I wonder about this a lot. And I wonder, what, God, do you want us to do? What mighty acts, what mighty works will you do for us? I wonder so much about it that as the years have gone on and, and praying through things with the pastors that we have on staff, I said, okay, the first of the year, Dwayne Allen took on a bunch of guys and gals, singles and young marrieds, and uh, it started up the group that met on Tuesdays, and they've been meeting all year long. He's done a tremendous job, and so we're at a place where, God, what more could we do? How much further could we go? Could we add something more? Because I wonder what our families are going to be like. Are they going to be healthy? Are they going to be strong? Are they going to be able to stand in that evil day and having done all to stand? And so starting next year, the beginning of the year, we're going to have a young adults ministry. It's going to really be called Young Families of the 20s and 30s, meeting at 9 a.m. with two pastors, Pastor Dwayne and Pastor Randy and their wives, and we're going to be ministering to young families Every Sunday morning, Bible teaching every Sunday specifically geared to the young family. Our Tuesday night bunch will still get together. That'll be just young singles now. We're going a little bit further. We're adding a little bit more. Because I wonder, as your pastor, I wonder where are we going to be? What's going to happen if we do not do something intentionally and strategically to train up and teach our young people, our young families that have young children, how to navigate the nurture and admonition of your children and how to teach them all that they need to teach them. What do I wonder about? What do you wonder about? What do you wonder about when it comes to God's incredible handiwork? I wonder, as it says in Acts chapter number 3, if we just are blown away by it and wonder like they did or not. Acts 3 says in verse number 10, and they knew that it was in... in Excuse me, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. You remember, Acts chapter number 3, Peter and John are there. This man who has been lame from the very beginning of his life is begging there for alms. Silver and gold I have not, but of such I have I give to thee. He's giving him the words of life. They heal him. And of course, he's now walking into the temple, and everybody's filled with wonder and amazement. It says in Acts 3.11, And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that was called Solomon's, greatly wondering. Do you wonder at the incredible works of God? I wonder, how did God put together everything and orchestrate all the different people and how he does that? I wonder. But I don't wonder like I'm wondering he did it. I'm wondering... <laughs> How could you be so good? How could you be so kind, so loving, so gracious? You supply all the acts of God, the attributes of God. They should cause us to wonder and wonder of his majesty. I love that word majesty. To think majesty, worship his majesty, witness his majesty. Today, we wonder his majesty Majesty, worship his majesty, unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, kingdom authority. Thank you, thank you, Jesus, for being majesty. Thank you, God the Father, for being majesty. Strong's definition, I had it up there last week. Hode, from an unused root, grandeur, imposing form and appearance, beauty, comeliness. Again, did you spend any time this week? Witness his mat. You witnessed last week again that drama up here. You were challenged with your witness to just take what you've witnessed, testify, and witness it to others. I heard this, I saw this. You know what? I actually experienced something really neat at church last Sunday. I watched five people do five uh, little four or five minute skits. It was a nice little drama, and it talked to, talked to my heart, it talked to my soul, it talked to my mind, it talked to my spirit about loving the Lord and seeing him as majesty, because each one of those little skits was a witness. What do I do with the witness of God sending his son, the Lord Jesus Christ? Majesty, majesty. 
Hebrews 1, verse number 3, again says, Who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the power, excuse me, by the word of his power. Who being, who being, who being our king, the brightness of his glory. When he was done, he himself, he purged himself. He did all that for us, as the Bible says. He was purged. He purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being much, made much so much better than the angels, as he hath my inheritance obtained a more excellent way. Majesty, kingdom authority unto his own. If I was a little skinnier, this would work better. You and I need to stop. Just stop right now and say, what is God like to me? What is God like to me? Our thinking about God, our thought life about God, it has such an effect on us. To me, I wonder if it's you and I just saying, okay, I know God is. When you think about how God really reveals himself to us, we have to stop, take back a step and say, do I rightly think about God? Do I say, okay, God, you've shown me so much. To quote something from A.W. Tozer, that our idea of God correspond as nearly as possible to the true being of God is of immense importance to us. Compared with our actual thoughts about him, our creedal statements are of little consequence. Our real idea of God may lie buried under the rubbish of conventional religious notions and may require an intelligent and vigorous search before it is finally unearthed and exposed for what it is, only after an ordeal of painful self-probing are we likely to discover what we actually believe about God. What do you believe about God? Well, he's my Savior. He's my Lord. I really like him a lot. He's really good to me. I've been thankful for him. What is the church's view on God? What is God like to you? Do you wonder over him? Is the concept of him being majesty just something that's good for a few moments a week? Or do I daily in my thought life wonder his majesty? In Luke chapter number 2, I want you to see, and I'm going to use Luke 2 and 4 and 8 in a short, short message again today with all our music. I want you to, to see right off the bat here, that in each one of these accounts that there is a witness. And then the witness becomes wonder. And that witness becoming wonder reveals to us again, if we see something, if we experience what God has done, we spend time in the word of God, we experience God's, God's mighty hand on things. I'm not talking about, well, it felt good. and I, 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 That's good, that, that's good, but it's deeper than that. To feel something and, 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 to, and to know something and, and, and to believe and, and then put it all together and go, wait a minute, that's just simply God doing something. I witnessed God. And when I witness God, I have to give a witness of it. I have to testify of it. And then if I do that, will that cause wonder for someone else? Will that cause me to wonder more on what God would do next? Or wonder in his character and attributes, why 
He has done what he has done in my life. I think of these angels showing up to the shepherds. We'll pick it up in Luke 15. I mean, 2.15, as it says up on the screen. And we pick it up here, just be, remind, be reminded of this. The angels have appeared to these shepherds. They've been given a call and an assignment. Let's see how it goes. Verse 15, and it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, and the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Now you stop right there. That's verse 15, right? So now go up a little bit above that. Verse 8 says, the same country shepherds were abiding in a field. Verse 9 says, the angel of the Lord came, you know. Verse 10, the angel said unto them, fear not. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy for unto you is born this day in the city of David. So, what have they done? They've said, hey, there's something that's going on, and we want you to go witness it. Does it say anywhere that they're to witness it and then go talk to other people about it? It doesn't say it. It doesn't say anywhere. They have been given a call. They were, the, the angels were sent by God, and the angel of the Lord said, hey, you're going to be able to go see this babe. It's David. Excuse me. It's Christ the Lord in the city of David. You'll see the sign. You'll find him uh, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Everything. And then it says in verse 13, of course, the angel of multitude of heaven, they started singing. And then they left. They're left with a call, with an assignment to go witness something. Verse number 16, we continue, and they came with haste, found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. They've done it. They came, they witnessed it, but here's what happens here in verse 17. You know, and when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things, pondered them in her heart, and the shepherds returned, glorifying, praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. They witnessed, and then they did something more about it. They told people about it. It says up on the screen this, witness becomes wonder in this way. When the witness of his majesty by the shepherds, they beheld him, they saw him, it became wonder for all those that heard it. What if they saw all that and didn't tell anybody? Then there wouldn't be that place of the verse saying that all that heard it wondered. Look, look, people don't wonder about very much about God because they probably don't hear much about God. Well, the shepherds, they went and they did way above the call. They did more than they were asked. I don't know. Maybe they were disobedient to God and God's going to punish them for not just going, witnessing, and leaving. I don't think so. See, in this case, they witnessed, they spoke, people heard it, and they wondered. What have you told us? The Messiah's come? In the city of David? The Savior is born? Christ? What? I wonder. You say, well, that's the Christmas story. That's good for that. I wonder what it is about your walk with the Lord, believer, that God has been implanting wondrous things. You have witnessed things. You have witnessed things. He has brought you to a place of wonderment. Does anybody know about it? Does anybody know about what you have seen? In the Lord? Or do they just know about you? They tell stories about you. And people are, oh, oh, you're so wonderful. No, I'm not. You should wonder about the Lord. The verse up there, a nice, bold, strong word, wondered. They all heard. They heard it. All they that heard it. The news of the witness of seeing the babe, seeing Christ, the Savior. 
and they wondered at those things. That's a good start. In fact, the witness became wonder. Did anything happen with your week this week? After what you witnessed last Sunday, did you tell anybody about the innkeeper's son? The innkeeper's son was really good. He gave a, gave a great message. Did you talk about Joseph, maybe? Maybe the mother of Mary, the shepherd's wife. Did you talk about the wise man and how he pulled things together at the end and said, whoa, whoa. This was divinity that I saw. He spoke of divinity. Did you tell anybody this week what you experienced or witnessed at church? You see, the shepherds, they had a calling to go and see and witness. And then they said, we're going to go and tell. <laughs> and those people that heard the witness, they wondered at the things they were told. 2,000 years ago, we were given the model well, I need more training on how to witness to people about Jesus. No, we don't. We've witnessed so much, church. Luke chapter number 4. Verse number 14, as it says up there. The backdrop, very simply here, is this. The first few verses of chapter number 4 in Luke's gospel talk of Jesus Christ being tempted by Satan. He is tempted in the wilderness 40 days of fasting the devil tempted him in these days. He did eat nothing, as it says in verse 2. We're reminded in verse number 1 that Jesus Christ was full of the Holy Ghost. Returned from Jordan after his baptism was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So we know the setting. Three temptation pieces come out. Those three areas. And then we land in verse number 14. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Isn't it interesting always when we point out in the scriptures that the Son of God, His Majesty, was led by the Spirit of God? And you and I think we don't need to be led by God sometimes. <sighs> and there went out a fame of Him in verse 14 through all the region round about, and He taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And, it came to Na and he came to Nazareth. Of course, this is where he grew up as a young person, so people know him. What do they do on the Sabbath? They go to the synagogue. They read scripture. They give witness. There's questions and answers. There is a time of worship unto God. So he comes to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for a read. Verse number 17, And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now, this, of course, was completely coincidental. Of course not. That the minister, the priest there, is laying out the scripture for the reading of the day. It so happens that Jesus is going to read about himself. <laughs> it's like, well, okay, let's see what the reading is today. Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, verse 18, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of, the, of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. This is beautiful, verse number 20. Old Larry Franklin told me a long time ago, stand up, speak up, shut up. This is a beautiful model. Just speak what you must speak and sit back down. Jesus Christ himself, the king of kings, he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and he sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. I guess he had their attention. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. <laughs> and all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words. Oh, you've spoken gracious words that have proceeded out of his mouth. And of course they said, is this not the king of kings and the Lord of lords? Is this not the great high priest? Is it not the Messiah? <laughs> is this not the son of Joseph? You see, 
They didn't know who was in front of them. He said, I am the fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah, spoken right here by reading it. I am it. This day, this moment, this year is, as he read, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus Christ sits down after having read, the people fasten their eyes on him. They bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words that he has spoke. You see, witness becomes wonder when the witness of his majesty by religious people became and can become. In that setting, they witness, these religious people, these Judy, Judy, uh, uh, Judaizers or, or, or just the Sanhedrin, the council, all the religious people are in this room. They're around gathered. You've got the, the Pharisees. You've got all these people. And they're witnessing him. They fasten their eyes, the religious people. And you know what? They wondered. We need to ask a question. Our question is, who are you? I mean, who are you? You are the son of Joseph. Well, wait a minute. He's the, most, the son of the Most High. Glory to God in the highest. He's his majesty who came from his majesty. So he is royalty. He's majestic. He is glorious. He is holy. When that verse is up on the screen, you and I are in wonderment as they are to bear him witness what if jesus christ spoke of we don't even we we have the bible you can open it up and hear from the living word of god he was reading himself that wonders that makes you wonder jesus is reading the living word of god do we wonder do we even wonder? And the power of the Spirit, he comes into Galilee, Nazareth. This is where he's brought up. He goes into the synagogue. It's the Sabbath. It's the common time to do. They bear him witness. They watched him. Eyes fell upon him. They bear him witness, and they wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. Do you wonder? Do I wonder? Oh, my, everyone. I wonder if I'm going to be able to make the bills important. I wonder if our children are going to be okay important. I wonder if in the ministry and the church that we're able to teach and train people and be able to disciple and so they go out. Import, these are all important things to wonder about. But are we just wondering about our works on heaven and not wondering about God's mighty works? Are we not wondering about his majesty and who he is? You spend time just thinking, what is your concept of God? What is your thought process of God? Do you really just, that's nice, I'll see him when I get the glory. Oh, there's so much more here, everyone. He wants us to have so much more. He wants more for you and me. Luke chapter number 8, and I'll tie it all together. Here we go. Luke 8, our last one. Here's the setting, of course. It's like Mark chapter number 4, Matthew chapter number 8. It's the setting where Jesus joins the disciples on the boat and the tempest roars. And we pick it up in verse number 22. And it says there, And now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into his ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. And as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. They are scared. They are worried. They, are, they, they, they don't know what's going to happen. They're in peril. And they came to pass, verse number 24, excuse me, and they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. They're worried about their lives. This is, you know, this, you know the accounting. Then he arose, rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased. And there was a calm. Verse 25. Jesus now speaks to them, Where is your faith? And they being afraid, wondered saying one to another what manner of man is this for he commandeth even the winds and water and they obey him 
they witnessed a mighty work. What happens? They were, they were afraid. They had fear. And so you think, how does witness become wonder? It says up on the screen this. The witness of his majesty by the disciples became wonder that was coupled with fear. Last time it brought a question. This time it's coupled with fear. The first time when we looked at the word of God, it said, wow, all of them just were in wonder at hearing the witness. You see, the wonder of who he is without having done anything, but just by Jesus coming. That's wonder. The wonder that we should have, wonder his majesty. The wonder of how Jesus Christ stood up, spoke these words of the fulfillment of prophecy in Isaiah. He sits back down, and they just start fixed on him and say, is this not the son of Joseph? People are wondering at the witness of Jesus Christ, the witness of his majesty by disciples became wonder that was coupled with fear when they're in that boat and they're worried and they're scared. In Luke's, excuse me, in Mark's gospel, it's even a, a tremendously, a little bit, not, but a little bit more detail in the thoughts and the words that are used. And very similarly speaking, they were afraid. They were in peril. They were worried that they were going to be dumped. They were fearful of their lives. Do you know there are people around you that are fearful of losing their lives because they are lost? They have not heard the witness of Jesus Christ clearly. This wonder for the disciples. Well, you are his disciples. You're followers of Jesus, are you not? Do you wonder what he can do? That verse up on the screen in verse number 25, I mean 22. And they, being afraid, wondered. They wondered, it is verse 25. And he said unto them, where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered. Saying to one another, what manner of man is this? I'll finish with this thought as I tie things together. I used to wonder if I was good enough to be a candidate for heaven as a religious person, and I've shared at different times. I, but a person came into my life, and I've talked of it, but just to remind, just to just over, just overwhelm me this past week, that a man would take the time to tell me that first time that I heard the gospel clearly about it was for by grace can you be saved through faith, not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. That thought just struck me. When I found out that I can know that I can have eternal life, this person took a simple little pamphlet and showed me for the first time. You know what it did to me? It made me wonder. It really did. It made me wonder, is he right? Is the Bible right? Were my parents right? It made me wonder, God, why would you put me in such a goofball religion type of situation if that wasn't how you were going to take care of me? I wondered, are I, am I not good enough? I wondered and I wondered. And so I started going to Bible studies because I wondered. And I would ask questions and I would sound like I'm sure... The village idiot. It caused me to wonder. Because I'd heard all the religious delivery of how God had sent his son Jesus. But I had no idea that it was just Jesus. And that was it. His majesty. It's his majesty. The shepherds went. They saw. They told People heard, they wondered. Peter and John were preaching the gospel in Jerusalem, the Acts of the Apostles at the gate, beautiful, a lame man. He gets healed. He walks into the temple and they wonder what happened. They wonder at the miracle of God sending his son Jesus. The disciples who have been following Jesus day after day wonder. That he is the one that the winds and the seas obey. 
have you and I stopped wondering about him? Because witness will move to wonder for those that you say you've witnessed his wonder. May I tell you, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come unto the Father but by him. I finish with this statement and a question. If our concept of God, his majesty, is not right, we will wander and wander. I mean, I'll wander away. If my concept of thinking how God is, what he is about, who he is, I'll wander away. How is it as a lost man? Almost 40 years ago, I wondered about God, but I would not wonder about him now, but rather wander away when I know him, and he's my father through his son, Jesus. Church, I wonder about whether we wonder properly and whether we wander away. We need to wonder about him. It will draw you back. I ask you this question then. What will our faith and wonder be like this season, this Christmas season, after our wonder of his majesty today? You heard some beautiful music today. The beauty of it was it all spoke of his majesty, his glory, his honor and praise. What would our faith and wonder be like this season after our wonder of his majesty today? Would you all please stand? We're going to finish here with a a word of prayer. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes as you stand? And as the music plays in the background, I would like to just bow your heads. Bow your heads. The music's playing. I want you just to just listen to the background music, but I want you to listen to God right now. Right now. Close your eyes and wonder. Do you wonder? I pray that your wonder and your faith in this Christmas season will be different because you wonder about his majesty today. I pray, Father, have your way in Jesus' name. Please respond. Please come.